They even have internet access at libraries these days. Never use it myself. Personally, I prefer a bit of privacy when I'm having a wank. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's the last episode of this series and I've decided it's time to give something back. I have done stuff for charity before. I mean, I give a lot to Oxfam. You've got to get the shit out of your house somehow. It's either that or fly tipping. <laughs> but I've decided I'm going to be more proactive and release a single to really raise awareness and cash for the charity. And if I can time it to coincide with my tour, everybody's happy. <laughs> I'm not sure which charity I'm going to go for yet, but I'm thinking Africa probably needs my help. I could go with a camera crew, maybe spend one day with some orphans that have no running water, then visit a Red Cross hospital, and finally do three days on safari and a week at the beach. <laughs> I offered to do some work for Comet Relief last year, but they just wanted me to man the phone, so I told them to piss off. <laughs> I went to the after show party, though. It was great. Everyone had a red nose. But if you take that much coke, you're bound to, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, better crack on. I am we're done. Nice one, darling. Big fan of the Gunners, then, yeah? I never missed a game. Well, let's have a look at it. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, this has been a great wedding, and it's an unusual honour, as the best woman, to be asked to give a toast. Um, I couldn't be happier seeing my brother John and Anna finally getting hitched. Anna is so kind and open and has only brought out everything that's good in my brother. Marriage is, of course, a very big step and it throws up a lot of life-changing questions. But on this wonderful day, the thing I really want to ask is... What's your favourite position? <laughs> no? When is a good time to ask that? So tell me about yourself. What? What are you into? Oh, food. Food? Yeah, big meat eater. Oh, meat eater? Yeah. Oh, I'm a vegetarian. Vegetarian? Yeah. I couldn't do that. No? No, I just love meat too much. What kind of meat? Beef, sausages, pork. Couldn't get through the day without it. You what? Sorry, I can't hear you. I said meat is the main ingredient in my diet. Oh. What? I thought you were going to say, I can't get through a day without getting some meat inside me. <laughs> Come on! Well, it's time again for us to present our form assembly to the rest of the school. For some reason, I had to submit my ideas for assembly this year. I had some really good ones as well. Teenage girls and the diseases they carry. What to do if you're a boy and your clothes catch fire. And finally, how to spot a slut. <laughs> All rejected. For some reason, Mr Boring Hawkins wanted something about bullying. So, what do we know about bullying? Oh, sorry. Well, bullying can take many different forms. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there is, of course, a physical violence type of bullying, but then there's a more subtle, almost unnoticeable, <laughs> psychological bullying. <laughs> Now, some people think it's only boys who bully, but actually, girls can be the worst bullies of all. Ugh, look at you, Amanda, you flat-chested freak, they might say. <laughs> Ooh, here comes Miss Newbreath, the human ironing board. They might continue. So just bear that in mind. Now, I have made a start on the assembly scripts, so Darren, Kevin and Toby, if you could come up here, please. Darren? Oh, go on. Hey, you. What are you doing? 
I'm just coming into school. Well, we're bullies, and you've got to give us your clothes. No, not my clothes. Yes, your clothes. Well, come on. There's no time to be shy. You're going to be doing this in front of the whole school next week. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amazing! Yeah. Fabulous! Yeah, was. And it must be the campus bleach advert ever! <laughs> I think people underestimate the effect global warming could have on the world. For example, if we carry on the way we're going, Amsterdam could well be underwater within 20 years. Obviously, this would be catastrophic for the tulip trade. Probably won't affect tourism too much, though. I mean, who wouldn't want to see a whore in a fish tank? Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what? Why don't we try something special? Hmm, special how? Uh, why don't we have some fun with some food? Mm hmm? Mm hmm, okay. <laughs> I've got just the thing. Yeah. yeah, I've been dying for us to try this. <laughs> you upset? Right. Absolutely. Brace yourself. <laughs> Are you ready to order? No. Oh, yes, I'll have the um, bruschetta to start, then the chicken and basil linguine. Excellent choice. And for you, sir? Yes, uh, can I try the salt and pepper squid to start and followed by the sea bass, please? Excellent. And what's your favourite position? <laughs> when is a good time to ask that? This is Penelope Chambers. On the surface, she's just an ordinary, mild-mannered, happy young woman in a regular nine-to-five. But she has a secret. Hello? Chief O'Houlihan? What? Terrorists? A nuclear bomb? The world's in imminent danger? Don't worry. Premenstrual girl will be there before you can say agonizing room spasms. For when danger calls, Penelope can manipulate her body clock until she becomes. Premenstrual girl! Oh, shit, me tits are tender. <laughs> You've done well, Chief O'Hulihan. Five million in bonds and a helicopter. It's a pleasure doing business with you. The bomb. Oh, of course it's deactivated. Would I lie to you? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're having a laugh. Don't worry about me, you selfish bastards. Ah, the menstrual girl. You can do nothing to stop me now. I know. <laughs> I do my best. I try. Sometimes it's too much. <laughs> My tits are so sore. I can't do this. <laughs> I need some support. <laughs> I'll have to fuck you, clumsy bastard. <laughs> Stay where you are, premenstrual girl. Is that a gun? Are you seriously, seriously, pointing a gun at me? Your anxiety, irritability and violent mood swings don't frighten me. I once dated Jun Sapong. <laughs> so, prepare to die, you chubby assed minka. You fucking what? I said, you chubby assed minka. You're too late, premenstrual girl. The bomb! The bomb! <laughs> Don't even fucking think about it. <laughs> Can 
someone fill this for me? I've only just saved the world again, haven't I? I feel really washed out. I need a hug. If you're good at tennis, you're probably a lesbian. <laughs> Well, I'm having terrible trouble finding a charity that wants to work with me. Even the Parkinson's disease people said no, and I've got personal experience of that. My uncle's got it. He just sits in his armchair all day, introducing Michael Bublé. <laughs> Seeing as all the big charities were being standoffish, I thought I'd try it the other way around and get some celebs on board first. And thankfully, there is one organisation that deals with virtually all the top names in the music business. Hi, can I speak to Amy, please? Ah, oh, she's counting her teeth at the moment. How about Robbie? Putting all of his efforts into growing a beard, eh? Hmm. Pete Doherty? Oh, I didn't know he was involved in music. Can he sing? OK, I'll try somewhere else. Thank you. The Priory wasn't as fruitful as I'd hoped, so I decided to go to some people's houses and pop a note through the door. First, I went to Elton John's. She's in a mood. Give that to your mummy, please. Thank you. Blimey, Angelina Jolie's got her hands full. <laughs> oh, hello, Jesus. Is Bono in? Um, we're having a meeting at the moment. OK, uh, can you give me this, please? Yes. Thank you. Well, that's all the major celebs approached. Now I just have to sit back and wait for the phone calls. Incredible. Definitely. Brilliantly made. Absolutely. Would have been easier if he'd kept the receipt. <laughs> Hello and welcome to VDTV with me, Valerie Denton. <laughs> Every week, I help you, the average person, overcome the difficulties of your tiny, boring, meaningless little lives. <laughs> Are you one of those people that nothing ever goes right for? Does your white bread always land cheap margarine side down? <laughs> Is your glass always half empty with the bleach you're about to drink? <laughs> then your look's about to change. This is Anna. She's dead unlucky. What? Well, look at you, clearly poor. Actually, I've just won the lottery. Syndicate? Yes. How terribly working class. <laughs> anyway, there are many ways you can change your fortune. Firstly, you can evoke the look of the Irish, pronounced Irish, by drinking lots of Guinness garnished with four-leaf clovers. Or you could wear a necklace of horseshoes and persuade a pigeon to shit on your head. <laughs> I have some here. <laughs> but we're not going to do any of these. Instead, we're going for the new age treatment of spiritual healing. Firstly, I'm going to need to open my third eye. <laughs> In the 60s, the hippies would use LSD to do this, but these days they use meditation. I don't have time, so acid it is. <laughs> <Ooh>. Wow. <laughs> Freaky man. <laughs> I am now wide open. <laughs> and have the ability to heal Anna's shit luck <laughs> with the mystical art of Reiki. Reiki uses the healing energy of stones to realign your electrical centres known as chakras. Now, <laughs> stones and crystals are used for all kinds of things and each one does something different. If we're going to change Anna's luck, then she's going to need a better attitude. So let's start with citrine. 
Stone helps with self-love, not that kind, <laughs> confidence and wards off any negative thoughts. We'll just pop that there. Then we move on to the heart chakra, where <laughs> rose quartz helps draw a gentle and positive energy towards you. Let's lay that on your chest. How are you feeling, Anna? Mm, yeah, quite relaxed, actually, yeah. Oh, excellent. Now, we move on to the crown chakra, where we need a stone that will offer us stability, strength and create a good foundation. Pop that there. <laughs> and there we have it. Your fortune's changed in a matter of minutes. Next week, facial reconstruction. <laughs> charities won't get involved. It's a shame, as I'm a big fan of the nursing profession. Well, I like the outfits, anyway. <laughs> One of my ex-boyfriends asked me to pretend to be a nurse. I sent him to bed, made him piss in a bottle and stuck a thermometer up his ass. <laughs> and Sarah Max is dead. The question asked by those who are left behind and left in pain by the death of a loved one is why? Why did God take Karen at such a young age? Well, I can only offer that Karen's is a life completed, not a life ended. Everyone who knew Karen, her many friends, her work colleagues, have all told me of her warmth, her energy, and her unflinching kindness to all. But above everything, those who knew her best have all mentioned her unmistakable and unfathomable... What? Tits? Is that what you were going to say? My unfathomable tits? My bristles? My big gazoingers? My tits? Christ almighty, I'm dead. Yet still you can't talk about my talent, my intelligence. No, it's all tits, tits, titty, tits, tits with you, isn't it? Well, go on then, Father. Get your dog collar in there. We've got one big stiff in the room. We might as well make it two, you shallow, evil bastard. Yes, that's right. I was going to say tits. What? Everyone I've spoken to, from your boyfriend to your nan to the man who sweeps the street outside your house, every single person has told me you were solely, totally and utterly obsessed by your bloody tits. <laughs> My tits? Yes, your tits, your jugs, your baps, your <laughs> cans, your lamps, your knockers, your hooters, your bloody tits. Well, you're dead now, so just lie down and shut up. They were fantastic, though, weren't they? <laughs> Bye, everyone. Does anyone want one last feel? No? <laughs> Now, hymn number 635. Christ, look at the norks on that. <laughs> I'm just really worried it might be something serious. Well, let's get you on the couch and have a look, shall we? OK. If you just uh, take your clothes off and pop this on, please. OK, if you could just bring your knees up for me, please. It's maybe a little uncomfortable, but just try and relax. Oh. All right there? Yeah, yeah, fine. Not too uncomfortable. I don't know, it's okay. So what's your favorite position? <laughs> Here we are, ladies. Yum. They look perfect, Karen. Good. Well done. You haven't met them at all. Oh. Man! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Where?
Well, I was finding the doom and gloom of the world a bit depressing, so I've come to the gym. Everyone's always complaining about the communal showers in this place. I don't know why. I love them. <laughs> It's 3.20 a.m. on Cash Cow, and that means we're playing Word Grid. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting, isn't it? <laughs> well, we've been on this Word Grid for almost three hours now, and thank Christ, it's time for our final caller. <laughs> Hidden in the Word Grid are parts of the body. Can you find the right one? If you do, you'll win £5,000. It's your last chance. <laughs> Who's on line one? Cock! <laughs> Sorry? Cock! I can see cock! <laughs> is, is, is this to do with the game? Your cock! It's your dollar, your Percy, your, your spam javelin! Do you mean penis? Yeah, you winky! <laughs> so that's your answer, is it cock? Yeah! OK. Judging by your vocabulary, you're obviously medically qualified, but uh, I can't see it myself. I can! I can see cock! Cock! OK, let's see if cock is there. Oh. I'm afraid it isn't. I can see it! Where? There! K-O-C cock! <laughs> this? That's not how you spell it, dickhead. <laughs> oh, no! Time's up. Let's see what the correct answer was. Intestinal tract. <laughs> how on earth didn't you spot that one? But don't worry, we've got another word grid to see us through the next few hours coming right up. And this time, we're looking for towns in Wales. <laughs> My name's Blue. I'm against globalisation and all forms of exploitation. I believe in overthrowing the capitalist dictatorship and the industrial techno hierarchy. I want to get rid of all the capitalist scum and create a society where everyone's equal and no one's in charge. So that's what I'm into revolution and the ultimate destruction of the capitalist system. That and Sex in the City. <laughs> It's here at last. That big day in a girl's life. The day you spend your whole life dreaming about. No, not your first three-way. <laughs> <laughs> We're renewing our wedding vows. It's fancy dress. And baby is going as the daddy of them all, Elvis the pelvis. Well, it's more Elvis the hip replacement. <laughs> hey, check this out. I got it at a pound stretcher. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Elvis in your pocket. If I had Elvis in my pocket, then mine cheeseburger. It'd be after me fur burger. <laughs> deal, you bastard! Come on, deal! I don't see why we have to dress up. It's only a waste of time. Well, it's her do, I suppose. She wants to go with thingy later. Thingy who? Whoever she's going as, I can do it better. Who's she going as, Barry? I can't remember. Deal! 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 Well, I'm not being upstairs by her, so you better have remember or you're going to be wearing your nuts as earrings. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> I'm dead nervous about the ceremony. I've always been very superstitious, which is why I've made sure I've got my something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Something borrowed, fag, cheese can cheat, eh? Something blue. <laughs> Something old, me husband, and something new. <laughs> Ta -da! Who the hell are you supposed to be? Madonna. Why? Who are you supposed to be? Baradonna! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> we are gathered here today... Cut to the chase, Vic. I'm hungry for it, and that is my Meals on Wheels. <laughs> do you, Joanna Nicole... I do. And do you... Baby, take Joanna once more to be your lawful wedded wife. Oh. 
Very well. In the presence of God... Yeah, 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 I know, I know. A little less conversation, a little more action. It's getting late, and his teeth aren't the only thing that come out at night. <laughs> Well, we've recorded the single now, but we haven't managed to secure a charity or get the celebrities we wanted, but we have managed to work around it. So enjoy, and do donate if you can. Around the world there's starving people who need feeding Our ecosystem screwed and soon will shatter the icebergs have all melted, also I've been reading. There's too many drugs and diseases, well, mostly the latter. <laughs> yes, the world is going tits up, and it's kind of horrific. So let's all do something about it without being too specific. <laughs> then things will be terrific, because things are bad. Yeah, things are bad, but we can end it. Send me your money. Send me your dodge so I can spend it. As the earth's in danger, it's in our hands. Let's save the world. With your cash and my perfect cans. Make donations in my tin. Don't be shy, just slip it in. Send your pennies. Send your notes, reach deep in your pockets. Need a hand with that, Darren. Come on, you've got to tie our scroll. The things are bad, really, really bad. Things are bad, in fact, they're shy. Life's really tragic. Whether you're black or brown or white. Our man is flagging, it's down to man. But it could just as easily have been a woman. <laughs> and if you love her, Look deep in your hearts. Then cash in your pension plan. Send a euro, a dollar, a pound, and I'll save the world. And when I'm done, if there's money to spare, then it's my round. <laughs> <laughs> was brilliant. Yeah, really moving. Pass me the phone. Give him a tenner for me, yeah? Tell you what, though, that Kim Marsh has really put on weight. 